really love. But remember, we have to really love them. I have one of those. Really? I do. Tell me about them. Oh, well, he kind of looks like Santa. Ooh. <laughs> let's, let's, let's put that in therapy. <laughs> Um, actually, my husband Jim is a wonderful guy. He is a musician as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we met uh, a few years ago and at the bookstore, and um, kind of stalked each other. It was. All right, we did it. Stand by. On my mark. And here's your host, Deb Saint Hilaire. Hello. Hey, happy Tuesday. Spending it. Part of it, at least, with the divas. You know, we figured out what was wrong with my microphone, and it's not the microphone, it's the board itself. That doesn't sound good. No, it would have been so much easier if it were the microphone. So I may end up changing microphones someday, but so far we're doing all right today. This is something we hope for. It is, yes. So it was just Father's Day. It was, it was. And um, I hope have all you dads out there, because you know the Devolution Show is for divas and those that love us, which encompasses really everybody. Everybody. Worldwide. Yes. Right? Worldwide. So um, it was Father's Day on Sunday, so we are dedicating this show to fathers oh, everywhere. Yes. yes. And we're not going to just talk about fathers, though, because we have... A guest here, a first-time guest. Her name is Robin Devereaux Nelson. Welcome. Thanks, Deb. And you are an author. I am. And a seamstress. I am that as well. And you make really cool things. You're an artist. Well, I like to think of myself that way. You, I, you are. It's very cool. Talk in your microphone again. I am talking in my microphone. Why isn't it? Why isn't it? Say something now. I'll say something now. Isn't that weird? Something's wrong. It's not on, maybe. Hmm. We were having trouble with that microphone. We were. We were. So, and um, we have Juliana Tacey in the sponsor spotlight again. And you are a frequent guest, and you are a good filler inner for sponsor spotlights. Because I love you. Thank you very much. And it's always fun. And it ended up when um, they they were locked out of the building, and it ended up that, that you two know each other. She and I went to school together. We Robin rode the same there. bus. That's Isn't that... We a, did. That is so bizarre. We did. We were corn chuckers. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Corn chuckers. That's what happens right. when you, you go to Western. You're corn chucker. Yes. Isn't that it's a small world, isn't it? it it's very small. It seems to get smaller all the time, especially it does. when you're a corn chucker. Yeah. <laughs> now, how much corn could a corn chucker chuck if a corn chucker could chuck, chuck corn? About as much do as a do drop drops when a do drop do drop do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. It, it's a lot. <laughs> it is. It's almost infinite. Yes. It's almost and, an and, infinite. And, and and something interesting. That is something my dad used to tell me. Is when that we, right? When we would say, how much wood could a wood chuck, chuck chuck? Then he would say the about as much do as a do drop drop thing. Huh. Yeah. His, so that's that's a little dad story. Her dad was really a great guy. He was a great guy. He did. He, did he a was a of, character. Yes, he was. Oh, I love characters. He was a character. Always yep. had his cowboy hat on. Everybody knew him as hillbilly or cowboy. Oh, yeah. Yep. Those are good kinds of dads, he really. He was a good dad. Was, so you both grew up on a farm. Well, I grew up on a farm, and, and she grew up down the road. Yep, I grew up. Well, well, we corn. had a farm also. Yeah. Yes. And I thought it was the most miserable life on earth when I was a kid Uh huh. because you know you had to go out and feed the cows and stuff before you went to school so you'd get on the bus and you had to check your shoes oh to make sure there just, wasn't cow poop just poo-poo. in case yeah 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 because you know high school is hard enough yeah <laughs> and I was a city girl well of course you were down yeah. <laughs> why did you say that why, like that why, why, I, I don't know <laughs> That's really bad. You're here with two That's farmers. That's interesting. Yeah. Yes. Town kids. Yeah. yeah. Townies. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and well, and you know what else? Um, today is National Pink Day. Really? And I should have I should have said it yesterday so that we would have been prepared. Pink? None of us have pink on, but you know what? Very. I have very very little pink. I think I have so. Pink everyone out there, just pretend you see us yeah. in, pink. In, pink. in pink. What shade of pink are you in, Robin? 
Well, Petal Pink, of course. Petal nails, Pink. That's what I would pink. pick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got there pink you nails. go. And what, what shade of pink would you be wearing? Hot Are pink. you wearing hot, hot pink. pink? I I will wear something in between the two. Ooh. Yes. Very, very light, though. Oh. But not quite as light as Petal. Okay. Okay. No, I like dusky, a dusky, dusky, pink. dusky yes. rose. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So there we have it. Mm. We are wearing pink, pink in honor of National Pink Day. So um, Robin is not only a seamstress, but she's an author. So we're going to be talking about her book, In Violet's Wake, a novel by Robin Devereaux Nelson, and we'll put a picture of it on our um, Facebook page too. It's real cute. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. And we'll talk about that, too. We are drinking this wine this evening. Um, we have two wines from Vino. One is a Nera Frizzante from Spain. It's kind of a, like a sparkling blush. But we didn't open that one because there's only three of us here, although we may drink a second one of this. <laughs> We're drinking Il Ugo semi-sparkling white wine from Italy. Which is, is another present. reason we are all pink. Uh, that's very true. It's very good. Very good. I thought maybe the pink was just reflecting up to our cheeks. I, I, could, that could be. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> I was on the lawn all day, so that, I got a little <laughs> So it ta- we were talking a little bit about what we taste in it. and This is an excellent summertime wine. And right on the bottle it says that you can drink it over ice. Not very many bottles of wine suggest that. Right. And it... Um, suggests that you have it over ice with a sprig of mint. Now, wouldn't that be refreshing? It would be really good. It's an excellent wine. It, it is. is. And what do you taste in it, Robin? It, it's kind of uh, apple It's very sparkly, fresh, fruity. Um, I think it'd be really mm. nice um, with some fresh fruit. Oh. You know, maybe some peaches, white grapes. Mm. Oh, and pretty, too. Oh, that would be very pretty. Kind of mimosa-ish. Yes, very mimosa-ish. And then you eat the fruit. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing bad. No. You're I right. Like I like it. You you make it healthy. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what you could even do is freeze grapes. Ooh. Oh, that would be excellent. That would be so pretty. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to do that. And then you're not putting that nasty ice in your in your wine. Right, and watering mm-hmm. it down. Right. Yeah, that would be much better. Much, much better. Okay, so go to... Vino Wine Warehouse. Ask Greg for Il, Il Hugo Semi Sparkling Wine and tell him that you heard about it on the Devolution Show and W4Divas.com and he'll give you special pricing for the Diva discount. And then you go home and you stick it in the freezer along with a bag of grapes. And then you sit out on your deck on Sunday and drink it. You know, this is this is one of those really rare bottles, though. It has an unusual top, you know. Yes. It's 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 not like the regular wine. It no. doesn't have a cork. It doesn't have a screw top. It's one of those bottles. Like a beer bottle. That's what I was thinking. It just it's it's one of those very rare bottles. It is. Do you know why there's no cork? No. Because, because there won't be any wine left. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> yes, that's true. There's no reason to recork no. it. Yeah. That's a good point. Good point. It is. Always count on me for a So good we point. all like this wine, and we highly um, recommend it. Yes, we that's do. That's a diva recommendation. It is, from all three of us. Hmm. I think we're going to have to start having diva recommendations. Ooh. Diva, I'm going to have to shorten that word somehow. Divinations? Diva Something. Mm. Divadations. Yes. Hmm. It'll, well, it'll grow on you. Is smoke coming yeah. out of my ears? A little. Yeah. yeah. And when I come up with something new, that happens. You'll, you're working. So anyway, um, if you want to call in where, um, and talk about your dad, the number is 989-402-5414. And I will go to the chat room right now. If you want to tell us a story about your dad... Or just want to wish your dad a happy belated Father's Day. Whatever you want to do, you feel free to either call in or join us in our chat room Mm. on W4Divas.com. And we have Susan there already, so I'm going to tell her hello. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself, would you please, Robin? Hmm. 
I, um, I'm a farm girl. No. No. <laughs> I, I am a farm girl. <laughs> And um, corn chucker. Yeah, I am a corn chucker. <laughs> and I, I, when I was growing up, I thought it was really horrible that I lived on the farm. But now I really appreciate where I came from and um, try to get back there as often as I can. And um, I grew up with some real no nonsense parents. So pursuing any creative arts was kind of a uh, not frowned upon, but um, it, it wasn't encouraged. encouraged a lot. So. It, being a teenager, which is a hard time anyway, I put a lot of that away because I wasn't encouraged to do it. And it wasn't until I was in my 40s, probably. I, I, I did it for a while, and I'd go back and forth. And I, I've done a lot of different things, um, theater and music and writing and painting. And um, I lost a job I loved very, very much. And I took it as a sign. Mm-hmm. that I was supposed to go on another path. Well, bravo. You know, and I I just said to myself, you know, you've always wanted to have the time to pursue your creative self, so do it. Yeah. It was very scary. It was very scary. The first few times I said to a person, when you go to a party or you go out and they say, what do well, you what do? do you do? And I said, well, I'm a writer. And then I duck because I felt like such a big faker that I was saying that and it took a long time for me to say that to myself a lot to believe it so Hmm. if you ask me now I'm a writer and I'm an artist and I'm a singer and I do all kinds of stuff feel good about um probably it took over a year of telling myself that that's what I do Mm -hmm. so now when someone asks me what I do I tell them I write that's what I do for a living very good that's good you know and it's funny um I do ha- have a problem with it because really, what do I do? I don't know, Deb. You're you're so good at so many things. You well, interpreted you. And, <laughs> and made yourself into so many things. Yeah, well, thank you very much. But what do I do? I you do so many things. I don't know what they'd call you. Well, my An entrepreneur. Coach, I have a coach. Okay, what does your coach say? My coach said that I give women a voice. Through my in, my individual and group coaching, my books, my speaking, my radio show, The Devolution Show, and my network, W4Divas.com. So you're a mentor. For all mm, women. Okay. You're a mentor. For all women. Mm-hmm. That's, oh, a, well, that's big, a big try, hat try, try that on. Okay. Say what do you do, Dubs? I'm a mentor. Wow. So you felt kind of like a faker when you said that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah the first few times it kind of feels that way. It, you, you'll get over it, though. It'll be all right. Say it a couple of times. We'll introduce you. This is Deb. Wow. She's the a mentor. mentor. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a new show on PBS. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny stuff. But it is. You know, it's funny how, you know, I come in here every day to work, and I have to... Shift hats like four times because I'm a student and I have to keep up my life coaching and my... Um, Continue education credits. Right. I have to do that. And I have to learn how to build my website and do social media. So I have to put time aside for both of those. And then I also have to have time to work on the website, work on the social media, and hopefully it just keeps getting better and then I have to do the station and all that stuff. So I have pretty full days. So I don't know if you noticed or not, but when you get up in the morning and look in the mirror, did you notice that you're a woman? So <laughs> you, you have a lot of stuff to do. No matter what. We, yeah, yeah, we just do That's stuff. We have point. a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys out there, but we really have a lot of stuff to do. That's why we're kind of grouchy sometimes. You know, Most, we're, we're always moving yeah. and got stuff to do. So just don't get in the way. Story, my dad and I going home with the lawn. That's pretty nice. I thought it was. Yeah, I like that story. It's one of those, you know, farm stories that we were working. I was doing my stuff. He was doing his stuff. And that's what we did. But you shared the deer. We did. We just got charged by a deer in Steve's car. Charged by yeah. a deer? Did he have horns? No, I don't think so. Did he, he didn't have a rack on at all? I don't think so. It all happened so fast. He, like, ran into the back of the the 
driver's door and then bounced and hit the 